one. All right, we have Julian Jeremy, and they are going to introduce interview our lady of the hour of the day <laughs> of the year, Barbara Lee. I have just had such a delight getting to know Barbara um, all over this time period. And we had this opportunity. Barbara's going to be one of our performers at, at Everyone In on October 31st. Um, I, I can't wait to watch because it involves humor. <laughs> so right off the bat, it's going to be good. Uh, so, but we want to find out a little bit more about you, Barbara. And so your friends, Julie and Jeremy, and I'm not sure if anyone else might be chiming in over there. Gonna it's Jake the pirate, sir. Yes, and I would be very glad to ask uh, Barbara, how are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Thank you so much for for sailing with me on my ship last summer. It was great. Did we have a good time? Yeah, we sure did. Yeah, we did. We just went uh, over the waves, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. All right. Uh, so we you're gonna have to a, we've ridden a lot of waves together. <laughs> we did. And sometimes I lose my ship. I don't know where where yeah, that's right, a lot of waves together. <laughs> I got that out. It's a, I'm a little slow, a little bit too much whiskey there, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so you look like you're you're I'm at I'm up here at the top. I don't know if you guys can tell. Hi. Too low. Okay, I'm gone. All right. So <laughs> hi Barbara. It's good to hi, see Julie. you. He needs to just be told to go away sometimes. Oh, so Barbara, I've known you since 1984. Oh my God. I know. You're so old. <laughs> we're not old. You don't have any wrinkles. What's wrong? That was just a long time ago. It's <laughs> we're not old. Um, we are we are eternally young because of um, the arts and and humor and um, you taught me so much um, in Friends Mime Theater. Um, which is, you know, what I auditioned for, and that's where I met you. Um, I thought you were marvelous. And um, so, so tell, tell us how you, um, especially I'm interested in, in the mime and the humor um, that you provide through mime. How, when did you get started doing pantomime? Well, it's a long story, so I'll try and cut it short. <laughs> um, I, my mother was an actress in Sheboygan. I mean, she was like a professional actress. She li was living in New York and Chicago, et cetera. But she had to move to, back to Sheboygan when, to have me because it was during the war and my father was in the service. And so with her as an actress, it was very, um, my mother was so different from everybody else. You know, she spoke with elocution, with, with diction, with volume, with emotion. Everybody in Sheboygan is kind of like, and then, and, 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 and kind of on one level. So it was very embarrassing. So for me to go into theater was a real stretch because I was like, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, it's so much fun. <laughs> and I was lured into it by all kinds of machinations, which I won't try to go into. But I first started studying mime because I was writing a dissertation um, for my PhD um, in French theater. And I happened to stumble on this amazing quote. Um, I, my a professor in Asian theater said, you know, you have to study Michel Sandini. He started theater schools all over the world. I'm like, okay, I read this article at the end. It was about this theater school that was started in France in the twenties that totally revolutionized actor training. So I, at, the, at the end of the article, it says, someone must write the history of this school before the memories are allowed to fade. I was like, it's me, oh my God, this is it, this is what I'm gonna do. And so that got me started on this whole career. I went to France, I went to, I was able to connect with Jacques Capot's daughter, he's no longer alive. I started studying this school and mime was like at the root of all their training. And so of course I had to study mime. And so I, of course, I, I heard about Reed Gilbert who was, running the mime school in Spring Green. I, I went to see a show, I was like, this is it. This is what I wanna do. <laughs> and so I started studying with him. I became the um, one of the performers and the associate director at the mime school. And then I was, and I had also studied clowning 
because that was part of their training. I studied gymnastics, which was part of it. Music was part of it. I mean, this school was just so awesome. So all these things that I ended up doing with Friends Mime Theater came out of that, that nucleus, that kind of germ of training. So I was very fortunate. That's the nutshell part. <laughs> Did, didn't you study with Marcel? Marcel? Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> when I was in France, <laughs> I studied with Etienne de Cru, who is called the father of modern mime, who wow. is much more classical. You know, he's all about isolations and uh, holding still sculptural poses. And, but then I also studied in Marceau's school. He was never there, of course. But his wife taught everything, or his ex-wife, Ella Jarosa, was a Polish mime. She taught everything. So she taught the walls and she taught the ropes and all the invisible stuff. But also she really emphasized character and the importance of posture and of hold of the emotion and all the things that we learn as actors. So, but Reed, Reed really put the cap on it for me because for him, it was like respect. To Respect comes from the Latin, spectare, to look, R-E again. So you keep looking at things and you learn how to really um, be open to everything and to constantly be aware and realizing that no, you can't take anything for granted. And mm -hmm. there's always other possibilities. And that's really what grabbed me the most because I could be tending to get kind of get inward and like I'm kind of self-conscious and like I was really much, much more um, well, theater just brought all these other things out in me that I didn't never knew I had because it was like I wasn't myself. I was all these other people. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you um, you then um, uh, began um, Friends Mime Theater. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the beginnings of Friends Mime Theater. Um, it was so spectacular when I was asked to audition, I just remembered, wow, it's Friends Mime Theater. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was really very close. Go ahead and explain a little bit about Friends Mime Theater. Well, <clears throat> this was in the 70s, 1974, 73, 74. And at the time, um, mime was not a dirty word. <laughs> mime was kind of, it was innovative. It was new and people were excited by it. And there was no mime in Milwaukee. I mean, so when I moved to Milwaukee from Spring Green, I started to uh, teach a class in mime, uh, mime and improvisation. And I met Mike Moynihan and he was the only one in the class who really, I mean, he did things that he, he what were based on character and that were based on real stories. I mean, and he, it just totally grabbed me and I was like, I got to work with this guy. So we went, we wanted to explore what was beyond the walls and ropes and all the invisible stuff. We wanted to create pieces that really explored form and it went deeper into the whole arena of human experience and, and theater could be, well, what they call total theater. It could be music, it could be dance, it could be of art, visual art. Mike was a cartoonist. Oh, Mike was also extremely funny, I have to say. <laughs> he, he really made me laugh. And as a very serious person myself, <clears throat> who always got in trouble for laughing because I laughed so <laughs> I love laughing so much. <clears throat> he was like the spark. I mean, we, and also he, he just had a, a way of pushing things forward. He's a Leo, you know, and he was like, mm, we can do it this way. And I'm a Pisces. I'm like, oh, we could do it this way. <laughs> so it's a great combo. Um, and we started with um, one show it was called A Myth of Changes. And it incorporated puppetry and incorporated like a, the, the stars were a, a balloon and an umbrella and a bag. <laughs> and then kind of morphed into humans. So we, from the beginning, we incorporated Oh, and music. It was very musical because Mike also played the guitar and I love to sing. So we did all kinds of experimenting with all of that. And then we started with an improvisation and mime troupe at UWM where we met some fabulous people. But then um, 
we wanted to we wanted to really get serious about it. So we quit our jobs, which is really scary. <laughs> and we said, okay, what what should our name be? Um, and both of us had come out of kind of difficult relationships. So we thought, let's let's be friends. How about that? <laughs> friends Mime Theater has a nice ring to it. So that's kind of how we began. And then our first thing was um, we did a clown baseball team. <laughs> it attracted a lot of people. That was fun. And then we just, and when we began to, when, because we had worked with some really great people at UWM, we kept, began to incorporate them. But Karen Kohlberg was really the, 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 the other part of the triangle that really made it work. From the beginning, we started with silent pantomime and we did a lot. We worked all over the state at fairs and festivals and things, clowning. And that's, I learned so much from Mike because like you say, Julie, like like I had said, don't, don't d mess with people. Bother people. <laughs> don't bother people. Mike was like that. I mean, he would just kind of like, he'd be walking with his, he was kind of big. <laughs> He'd, he'd do this lumbering kind of walk. He'd go to the edge of a curb and he's like, oh my God, oh, can I get down that? And he'd be kind of tentatively putting a foot forward and you know, he'd pull it back. <laughs> and, and the kids would like, like they'd all be drawn, drawn to that. And finally, the little girl came because <clears throat> he took his hand <clears throat> and they went down the curb together. <laughs> and that was kind of typical. Yeah, so it was... It had roots in play, had roots in discovery, and just really, and playing. <clears throat> there were so many times when we'd be at a festival and everybody was just kind of standing around, and there'd be this wonderful music playing. And so we would dance with people, and we would get people moving together, or we would get people like, um, I would discover a, an invisible string in somebody's sweater, and I'd start pulling it. And <laughs> ooh. <laughs> And then, then it would morph into a rope and then people would start playing with the rope and just an invisible popcorn, you know, like, oh, and tossing it to kids. I mean, well, you know that, Julie. <laughs> it yeah. was so much fun and just really got people involved. So and, and I think, you know, um, I'm sorry, with, don't, Friends go ahead. Mind, with Friends Mind Theater, you also, you took very, some very serious topics and, and made made them clear what the, what they were and that they were serious and that there was humor there was lightness about it and i think that really worked with friends mime theater oh yeah absolutely the only thing yeah. was people couldn't understand friend mime because you guys were all talking like <laughs> <laughs> that but it was it was a great name i loved it because it kind of drew you in so that was very cool we, we, we did right. i have a question for you yeah um so uh i know you put together a production called the Survival Revival Review, which is based on your personal experience of dealing with a disability and also um, trying to make a life for yourself uh, post-accident. Um, and I guess keeping that in mind, why would you encourage others to get involved in the arts, uh, specifically others who are struggling with a disability? Oh my God. <clears throat> well, I'm like you, Julie. I mean, thank goodness I had been working as a clown for so long because when I was injured, and you'll see this in the performance that I do, um, <clears throat> I, I talk a lot about what happened and how, how difficult it was for me to make that transition because I was partly paralyzed I couldn't use my legs. I was like, how can I, how can I function? How can I even go on without being able to move, without being able to work like I had been working? And I just was completely heartbroken. But I started noticing the funny things, <laughs> which you'll see in this little show I'll do. And um, it just having that sense of humor, having that background, just completely. I started seeing how there could be a show out of this, you know, there were all these quirky characters, <laughs> there was all this bizarre, I mean, to be partly paralyzed, it takes you into a very surreal life. I mean, it's, everything is so different. 
that it starts to feel, I mean, there's some funny things about it. <laughs> so, um, and it's dark humor, I have to say, there's a little dark humor in there. <laughs> but it's also, it's such a relief to be able to, to find the humor in it and to find the creativity in it and to laugh with it. So yeah, it's, um, that made all the difference. That was my healing process. And I was able to, I got so much support from the community. Um, Sarah O'Connor, who was the managing director at the Milwaukee Rep at the time, um, I saw her at a party and I had this idea about the show. And so I said, Sarah, I'm thinking about trying to create a show about my healing process. And she said, yes, yes, oh, talk to me. I have to circulate, but call me. <laughs> so I called Sarah and she's like, we can get a grant for this. And she did. She got one from the Greater Milwaukee Foundation that got me a player, you know, somebody to work with me, a director, a, a stage manager, um, lights, props, everything. I got to do the performance at the Stackner Cabaret. I mean, it was, and, and I got an opportunity to tour it because I had all the materials for touring. It was just astronomical. And then I did, I toured it for years. Um, I even took it to Las Vegas. <laughs> wow, the Spinal Cord Nursing Association. <laughs> that was a trip. Yeah. It sounds like an example of if you build it, they will come, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and people were so surprised. I mean, I got just amazing reviews, which, you know, who would think to, to see a show about paralysis? I mean, really? It was wonderful. I mean, it is wonderful. I saw it at the Rep when you first started doing it, oh and it, it was it was life changing. Wow, the way you brought humor into it, and and your story, and your your um, attitude toward what had happened was was really uplifting, Barbara. Oh, really thank you. Well, it sure helped me. It was like an an altar. It was like I don't know. There are angels out there, you know, really, that kind of can step in and go, well, it doesn't have to be this way. It can't be that way. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really great. Very, very, very cool. Great. All of these interviews, I mean, this was just so amazing to listen to. And, and I like that. Who would have thought a, a performance on paralysis? Well, I mean, the biggest thing that we have in society and, and part of what we want to do with everyone in with this event is to try to start changing and breaking down the stigmas that are out there against people with disabilities because there is so much that can be done. And, you know, Barbara, you just, you know, mentioned there are angels out there and <laughs> Okay, yeah. keep everything going here because I mean, literally, I shouldn't be alive with the things I've been through. Um, and here I am being able to do this work um, is amazing. And um, even 10 years ago, my concentration level was gone. And here I am with all kinds of things going on constantly. Um, but there's a reason. And the reason is to bring all of us together so we can all talk about our stories, get the word out there, change another life. Because if we go through everything with planning this event and everything that goes on the day of October 31st, and we come out of it and there's one life that's been changed because of it, that's success. For sure. Yes. So, Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jory. Thanks. Thank Barbara. you so much. Really appreciate all this. Jory. <laughs>